If you want to take the most pristine, unpolluted images of the universe, your best bet is to leave the Earth behind. Observatories like Hubble, Chandra, Fermi, Spitzer, and more have showcased how remarkably effective a space telescope can be. So, what if we build world's biggest telescope on Moon? This is Justin. And you are watching Infinity Stellar. A large part of the universe is unexplored because of Earth's ionosphere works as a shield and reflects back the larger wavelengths greater than 10 meters. Here on our planet, there are all sorts of effects which interfere with our imaging capabilities. Light pollution limits how deep we can see, the atmosphere harms our resolving power and our ability to observe clearly, clouds and weather interfere with our light collecting goals, the sun and the Earth itself block our view of large portions of the sky from all terrestrial locations. Yet observatories like Hubble, Chandra, Fermi, Spitzer, and more have showcased how remarkably effective a space telescope can be. The views and data they've returned to Earth have taught us more than any similar observatory could have revealed from the ground. So what if we build world's biggest telescope on Moon? Believe it or not, it's a terrible idea in all ways except one. The Moon, at first glance, seems like the ideal location for a telescope. There's practically no atmosphere at all, which removes all the light pollution concerns. It's far away from the Earth, which should greatly reduce the interference from any signals that humans produce. The ultra-long nights mean that you can observe the same target continuously for as long as 14 days at a time with no interruptions. And because you have solid ground to brace yourself against, you don't need to rely on gyroscopes or reaction wheels for pointing. It sounds like a really good deal. But if you start thinking about the way the Moon orbits the Earth, with the entire Moon-Earth system orbiting the Sun, you might start to realize some of the problems that a setup like this would inevitably encounter. First, if you put your telescope on the Moon, which side do you pick? The near side or the far side? Either one has drawbacks. If you place your telescope on the near, Earth-facing, side of the Moon, you will always have a view of the Earth. This means you can send and receive signals, control your telescope, and download-upload data in nearly real time, with only the light travel time of signals across space limiting you. But it also means that Earth-produced interference, like radio broadcast signals, will always be a problem you need to shield yourself from. On the other hand, if you're on the far side of the Moon, you shield yourself from everything coming from Earth quite effectively, but you also have no direct path for data transfer or signal transmittance. There would have to be an additional mechanism set up, like a lunar orbiter or a link to a transmitter receiver on the near side, just to operate it. Either way, you're going to have a slew of problems to contend with that you wouldn't encounter simply from going into the lonely abyss of interplanetary space. The two biggest are moonquakes and temperature extremes. Engineering a telescope that can survive those temperature extremes and still function optimally is an extraordinary challenge. It's no wonder that the only lunar-based telescope we have, at present, is a UV telescope on the Moon's near side, at wavelengths where the Earth's atmosphere absorbs almost all of the light. But there is one very specific application that the Moon offers an unprecedented advantage over any other environment. Radio telescopes. The Earth is an incredibly radio-loud source, due to both natural and human-made causes. Even in space, the signals that emanate from Earth pervade throughout the solar system, but the Moon provides a stunning environment for immunity to Earth's radio signals. The far side literally uses the Moon itself as a shield. We could detect signals of inflation, the early stages of the Big Bang, and the formation of the universe's very first stars with a lunar radio telescope. While there are hopes for doing this either on Earth or in space, the lunar far side offers more sensitivity, due to being shielded from Earth, than any other option. Currently, whenever any spacecraft travels behind the Moon as seen from Earth's perspective, it causes what we call a radio blackout. The fact that radio waves cannot pass through the Moon means that no signals can be sent or received during that time period. Orbiting satellites, any far side stations or rovers, and even Apollo astronauts, all have no means of communicating with Earth with the Moon in the way. But this also means that they were shielded from all sorts of contaminating radio signals that occur on Earth. GPS communications, microwave ovens, radar, cell phone, and Wi-Fi signals, and even digital cameras, are among the many terrestrial sources that contaminate radio observatories. But on the far side of the Moon, all of humanity's sources of interference are 100% blocked. 
It's the most pristine environment for radio astronomy we could ask for. So in order to capture those wavelengths, NASA is planning a ultra-long wavelength radio telescope, a 1-kilometer or 3,281-foot radio telescope on the far side of the Moon. A crater will be used as a base for telescope that could be up to 5 kilometers in diameter. This telescope would be able to measure wavelengths and frequencies that can't be detected from Earth. The ultra-long wavelength radio telescope would be called the Lunar Crater Radio Telescope and would have tremendous advantages compared to telescopes on our planet, the idea's founder Saptarshi Bandyapadhyay, a robotics technologist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory wrote in a proposal. This Lunar Crater Radio Telescope, LCRT, with 0.6-mile diameter, will be the largest filled aperture radio telescope in the solar system, said NASA. If built, the Lunar Crater Radio Telescope would be the largest filled aperture radio telescope in the solar system, Banyapadye wrote. A filled aperture radio telescope is a telescope that uses a single dish to collect data rather than many dishes, according to Vice. Because this telescope would be on the far side of the Moon, it would avoid radio interference from Earth, satellites, and even the Sun's radio noise during the lunar night. It would also let us gaze out into the cosmos without the veil of Earth's atmosphere. LCRT could enable tremendous scientific discoveries in the field of cosmology by observing the early universe in the 1050 meters wavelength band, i.e., 630 MHz frequency band, which has not been explored by humans to date. In fact, the telescope could be maintained and operated by a crew of resident astronauts living in the recently proposed Artemis Lunar Base Camp. The Artemis mission will see a series of crewed and uncrewed flights to the Moon over the next decade, including sending the first woman to the surface in 2024. The universe is out there, waiting for us to discover its secrets. When we decide a lunar radio array is worth it, we'll advance tremendously in uncovering our cosmic origins. Hey! If you liked the video then for more fascinating content about space and tech world, do subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Thanks for watching Infinity.